Welcome back to P2 Aero and the Yamaha powered Rans S21 built. Today I'm playing around with electrons, so I thought I'd bring you along as I explore the reasons behind why you see diodes on starter and other contactor relays. I'll be the first to admit that I don't fully understand the sorcery behind why this is the way it is, but I thought I could come up with a practical demonstration showing it. In my case, this is the starter relay that would have come with a snowmobile that had come with this engine in it. I wasn't sure if it had a diode inside, so you see me testing it here in comparison to a diode that I have. If you have a diode setting on your meter, a diode will read in one direction only. If you don't, a simple check of resistance will show more in one direction than the other. In my case, it was the same in both directions on this relay so it's safe to say that there is no internal diode, and I should add one. We know the purpose of these relays is to switch a high amp load with a small one, and it does that by energizing or de-energizing a coil inside. When the current is flowing through the coil, it's magnetized, pushing a contactor bar across the two larger terminals, allowing flow to the starter. The problem comes when you de-energize this coil. What you'd see if you had much more sophisticated equipment than I have here is a reverse polarity spike or discharge of that coil, many times the input voltage. This dissipation will significantly shorten the lifespan of traditional toggle or key switches, as well as potentially wreak havoc on all the expensive electronics that I have upstream in my panel. Anytime you have a high inductive load like this, you have to consider a means of protecting anything else that could be affected by it. Some smart person out there figured out that if you throw a one-way valve across this coil, when it de-energizes and starts flowing backwards, it will dissipate locally and not travel upstream. The diode symbol has a triangle pointed in the direction of flow and a line indicating the way it won't flow. In our case, we don't want the power shorted to ground, so the line side will go towards the positive terminal. As I finish testing this relay for a diode here, you'll see me set up a visual test rig to demonstrate this. The GoPro struggled with the close-ups, but I think that it'll serve its purpose. The first test has no diode in play, and you can see just how much energy is there when we pull power off. Now let's rig up a diode between the hot side and ground and repeat the test. And like magic, no giant lightning bolt jumping across the contacts of your switch or $4,000 EFIS circuit board. It sure makes you wonder why all relays don't just come with this protection built in to begin with. When I built my engine harness, I did include provisions for this diode as you see here. I have one more wire to wrap up on the ECU before I'm ready to power up some of its systems and play around with things a bit. I'm kind of at an odd state in the build where I have some things done and a lot not done but I can test a few things. So my goal here is really just to get the PDM and keypad set up along with making sure that the engine harness is all working like it should. I touched on the tools that I use for electrical stuff in the past, but I have to mention that this crimper set has been awesome and it was a much cheaper option than something like a Daniels kit. I'll link it below for those interested. If you want more info on how I size a wire to a specific load, I also have a video on that so go check it out. One of my favorite tools I got during this project is a heat shrink label printer. While it was a bit of an investment, it's really a mute point when you consider the overall cost of an airplane build like this. And I think it adds a level of professionalism that would be hard to duplicate. Add to that the ease of troubleshooting and maintenance on the system later. I've never used any other brand so I can't really say go buy this one specifically, but look into getting yourself a shrink printer for sure.
with my string tie all back in place there keeping things nice and tidy it's time to flip the switch and hopefully not let any smoke out of the harness spoiler alert I already tested it and it works before I turn on the camera I programmed up the circuit for the keypad and as you can see it starts to do its thing when powered up I don't have a battery at this point so don't make fun of my temporary power setup Yes, that's an old computer power supply that I converted over to a power source just for things like this. You'd be surprised just how useful that thing is to have around. So a simple USB cable connects me up to the PDM, and you can see that when I enable the starter circuit, the relay up front clicks just like it should. A bit of welcome reassurance that my harness just might work out in the end after all. So this is just a bit of playing around here with the different tabs of the software just to give y'all a preview of it. If you're familiar with vertical power, this is a similar option to that in that it's a solid state control for power distribution, although it's not built for aviation specifically. Tech like this does increase the complexity of a project for sure, but I feel like the capability and reliability gained is well worth it in the end. I won't dive too deep into this just yet but be looking for videos in the future. I'll be doing some pretty cool things with all this as we progress further. As always, I really appreciate your comments and interaction, so if you got something from this or have something to add, please let us all know in the comments below. I'll see you on the next one.